I grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area and as a kid in the 60s, not to date myself too bad, but I used to go to Laguna Seca and was very lucky to be able to witness the Trans Am races and the Can Am races and other series that came through there. And I was always impressed with the Cobras and the, Cor and the Corvettes and they were always battling it out. And you always had the Chevy guys and the Ford guys. This car was originally Chevy's best weapon against fighting it out with the Ford powered Cobras on the tracks back in the early and mid 60s. This car definitely captures that early feel of the cars I used to see at Laguna Seca as a kid. It's a 1963 split window Corvette. The car was originally purchased by Tom Harmon. He raced the car from when it was new at tracks such as Black Hawk Farms. The original class the car was built for was the B production, SCCA class. The car actually still has the logbook number pressed into the original roll bar that's in the car currently. It's a 350 Chevy in it right now that was put in around 1970. Originally the car had fuel injection, the Rochester fuel injection. I do have some pictures of the car with the hood open with the fuel injection on it. Four speed Muncie and 411 gears. I don't have early records from the mid 60s as to the modifications that the original owner Tom Harmon did to the car but I do have records from in the 70s and it's had Dick Gullstrand suspension components added to it. Uh, the leafs in the back and some of the uh, uh, suspension braces in the front were from Gullstrand. It also has J56 brake upgrade, disc brakes on it. Some of the uh, interesting things that have survived over the years, there is an igloo fuel cooler that was rigged up in the car that I really enjoyed. So they took an igloo cooler and they ran a copper line up through the cooler to, and then they'd load it with ice before the race to help keep the fuel cool. The car still has some of the markings and decals and stuff from, from the last owner, including the uh, number, uh, number 63 number on the side, which is obviously the year of the car. It is a split window Corvette. 1963 was the only year they made the split window Corvette. And it also has return to glory on the back of the car. And I don't know what his thought was on that. In fact, I'd like to take it off, but. When I first saw a black and white picture of this car, I was impressed with the stance that it had. Uh, when I purchased the car, it had a set of Goodyear stock, tar stock car racing tires on it and uh, they were slicks on the back, which weren't great for driving on the street, so I ended up putting a new set of tires all the way around on the car. And basically, they're the same size tires as are used on a GT40. And so I modified the exhaust system, we built uh, the custom side pipes that are on it now, and uh, I got it licensed and titled so that I could drive it on the street. Like I said, I took the slicks off and put on tires with treads so I could drive it street legal. And uh, I don't drive it very often on the street because of the 411 gears. You're going down the freeway at about 4,000 RPM to, just to go 70 miles an hour. But the car is a lot of fun to drive on the street. It definitely attracts a lot of attention. The car actually runs pretty good on the street, except for the gearing. It uh, runs cool enough to drive around in traffic. It corners really pretty well. Uh, it's a short wheelbase car, maybe a little skittish because of the 40-year-old technology and the suspension, but it really does, it's just a fun car to drive around. Throughout the 60s, the car carried the number one and was Kelly Green. I'm not sure what time it went red. I know the last owner did have the car painted, but whether he painted over the green or it was already red, I don't really have the uh, 80s and early 90s history on the car. I do know it was stored for around 15 years in a garage as part of its history. It's missing the headlights, uh, the glove box is cracked, there's some chrome pieces missing. What I found interesting is the chrome piece that runs across the top of the windshield and the lower part of the windshield. I noticed that in the pictures from 1970 it didn't have those chrome pieces either. So I'm not sure whether maybe those were taken off as part of the prepping the car for competition in case they had a problem with those coming off during races. The car is definitely an example of the types of cars we work on here at JBA Racing. 
As you can see, the JBA sticker on the front, we're not afraid to advertise what we do, both on the street and here at the shop and at racetracks. Some of the organizations will welcome you with open arms regardless of what modifications you've done to the car. Others are quite strict about having the car preserved in the really the exact way it raced back in its era. One issue that I've been struggling with ever since I got the car, some of my friends run in the B production class uh, of the vintage road racing groups and they run like 63 Cobras and the only way that I'm going to be able to run in that class is to take the flares off the wheel wells and pretty much return the car to the way it ran in the mid 60s. Again those wheel wells were done in 1975 so it's a little bit later history. So I've been struggling with whether or not to take the car back to that vintage as it first ran look. My problem is that I really love the way the car looks now. I like the stance. I like the way the wheel wells look and I hate to get rid of those. If you're a motorsports enthusiast, it's not hard to track cars like this down because they do exist. Uh, they are not inexpensive, but if you attend any of the motorsports events, the races, the vintage races, whether it's VARA, V-A-R-A, or HMSA, uh, you will find cars that are available for purchase if you want to be a part of preserving this great race history.